So a family in Maine was stalked by five huge over eight foot long wolf creatures that can stand upright. They lived on a farm in a very secluded area and were chased into their house by these things and completely horrified, they barricaded their doors shut with furniture as the beasts hopped up on their roof looking for an entry point trying to claw their way in. Look up Palmyra Wolves on YouTube and you will find this story quickly and please let me know all your thoughts on this. Thanks. In 2019 I was having a very hard time being around people. I eventually packed my belongings up and went to live my life at age 30 by myself in the woods. I was scouting an area that was in Delaware County which is in the suburbs of Philly looking for the perfect spot to spend my summer. After my long journey testing different areas out having bad experiences such as my tent flooding after heavy rains I found a huge hill that probably went up for a few thousand feet. This certain hill was on a giant rock outcropping with many beautiful stones such as garnets embedded in the host rock. I honestly thought I found the perfect camp secluded from everyone and everything surrounded by a large creek. The area was well planted with huge trees of many sorts. So due to all these factors being perfect for what I was looking for I set my tent up right on top of the hill. The tent that I owned was a one-person tent literally just big enough for me to sleep in which is all I really needed. I'm pretty much said all I had left to do was create a barrier with local tree branches so I could keep out anyone and hide my tent. Upon stringing up a huge wall of branches in the area and putting trip lines around my campsite I began living my life. Many days passed that summer before the incident that changed my life forever happened. So before I delve into this experience I want to add that it would be nearly impossible for any dog or anyone to get up this hill, someone would have to be extremely dedicated in finding this place to get to it. During my adventure living alone in the wilderness my brother would occasionally meet me a bit away to drop of supplies such as beer food water etc. On a beautiful summer night after it just rained very heavily I was laying up on the hill right outside my tent I was immersed in extremely dense fog, the whole area looked as if it was covered in a huge cloud. I was tired from a long walk earlier so eventually when it hit around 10pm I retired to my tent. I crawled in and laid down with all my equipment around me it was extremely cramped in there. I zipped up the door flap and began relaxing I started reading a good book I had when I noticed it was getting really late so I got my flashlight out put on my headlamp and just chilled. Periodically I would text my sister to let her know that I was okay and just conversate about certain things it hit around 1 o'clock am when I just started having a very strange feeling, you know a feeling something is wrong, I tried to shrug it off but it wouldn't go away I laid there with my headlamp on fully illuminated. My tent had a tiny opening at the top with mesh so you can see out of it other than that you can't really see anything on the outside. As I was reading I suddenly heard something run very loudly towards my tent right on my left hand side it stopped right next to me and began loudly barking almost as if a dog is right in your face about to attack. I suddenly shuddered with fear saying to myself that can't be a dog there's no possible way anything can get to my tent with my barricade and my trip lines or at least not without making an extreme struggle and lots of noise, so in complete fear hearing this beast growl, and bark like a maniac I fumbled to get my phone in a panic I started texting my sister saying listen there's something outside my tent and it's pretty pissed off. She texted me back saying maybe it's a dog I'm like yo a dog could not get up this hill it's impossible. The thing stopped harassing me and eventually disappeared after about 10 minutes. I was very frightened after I heard what I heard so I dialed 911 in my phone and held on to it in case the thing came back. After an hour passes and nothing happened I began to relax a little. I kicked off my shoes cracked open a beer and resumed to read. Let me just say I've been in the woods for 6 months straight before and never had anything like this happen it was so chilling that I get sick thinking about it. As I'm laying there time started to pass with no sign of the creature I was too horrified to even look out the tent at this point plus the ground was covered in fog. 3 o'clock rolled around. I firmly held the phone in my right hand just in case. With a sudden moment passing I was completely paralyzed I laid there in a state of fear so intense that I thought I was going to die then something grabbed me. 
Whatever grabbed me began picking me up and smashing me into the ground. This thing was so strong that I felt like a rag doll it just kept squeezing me and shaking me as if I was nothing. I looked at my phone in my hand desperately trying to move my thumb to hit the dial button but it was impossible. This thing was breathing so loud and making noises so sinister that the impression I got was that this thing crawled right out from hell and wants to take me out of my tent. The cries from it were almost like a loud pulsing sound similar I guess to a giant heart beating out of control it beat the living hell out of me I pictured myself being carried away by this horrible thing into a cave to be experimented on or something really evil. After fighting for probably 7 minutes while being completely paralyzed it suddenly stopped. The state of fear I was in was so intense at that moment I was free that my thumb immediately hit 911, I got a girl dispatcher on the line I thought to myself what do I say I'm in the middle of nowhere and I was attacked by something no one is going to take this seriously. I hung the phone up and started texting my sister saying listen here is my location I was just attacked by something. I got no answer I kept texting, no answer. I cowered in my tent for the next few hours till the sun came up, I was so worn out from the beatdown that I crawled out of my tent in extreme pain. After a complete search of the area for footprints or a sign something had been there I came up empty no lines were tripped no branches were moved and my tent wasn't damaged, doesn't make much sense because I'm damaged I could barely walk. Eventually I moved my campsite and got a bigger tent, I still don't know what it was that attacked me I don't know what that thing was menacingly barking outside my tent, I'm literally scarred till this day. I now know that there are things so powerful out there that they literally can paralyze you by just coming close to you, apparently they can bet the hell out of you through your tent without leaving any sign of having been there. This all really happened and I wish that I could tell the story better through typing but that's all I got. Was it a Bigfoot the dog man I don't know but it could have killed me very easily if it wanted to it could have made me a missing person in a heartbeat I don't know why I survived or how. I have a feeling that this thing was pissed at me for tearing down giant tree branches to fortify my camp but not exactly sure the day I tore a lot of branches down then I was attacked so do anyone out there if you're camping don't harm any type of tree or plant that might trigger these things to attack. Let me know your thoughts on this true event. I always wondered about the dog man. I had a terrifying experience when I was camping on a huge rock face in PA. I was alone in a small tent and it had just rained out and fog was covering the ground. I was surrounded by water and huge trees up a giant hill I doubt that a regular dog would have ever made it up. I was laying down in my one person tent reading a book when it was about 1 o'clock and I started getting a really bad feeling and I heard something moving around directly where my tent opening was. Luckily it was zippered. I heard it pacing back and forth, then it started growling and barking. It definitely was not a dog, it was much larger and was absolutely dreaded sounding. This lasted for about 10 minutes. As this is happening I'm texting my sister telling her something is outside my tent, and by the way there is no possible way a dog could have climbed up to where I was. It was much too steep and surrounded by water, I was horrified but eventually relaxed enough to kick off my shoes and crack open a voodoo ranger ipa. And just as a precaution I dialed 911 in my phone in case something happened so I'm holding my phone in my hand the whole time cause of how scared I was. Anyway it reached 3 o'clock am and I was suddenly overcome by such intense fear that I was paralyzed. I tried to move my phone to hit the send button but couldn't I was then gripped up and smashed around by something so powerful that I was basically a ragdoll. It kept slamming me into the ground and I was completely paralyzed. I kept trying to move my thumb and couldn't all I could hear was a loud labored breathing. It kept beating the hell out of me then suddenly it stopped I was able to move again. I dialed 911 and got on the phone with the dispatcher. I suddenly choked up cause I didn't know what to tell her. I was camping somewhere that I shouldn't have been and I was attacked by an unknown beast. So I hung up and proceeded to call my family none of which answered, 
I sat up till the sunrise literally shaking waiting for this thing to come back and rip me from my tent and take me wherever it wanted to take me. Finally the sun came out, I crawled out of the tent in agony, and searched around everything. I couldn't find one footprint or any sign that something had been there. I was baffled. All I know is this thing had the powers to physically paralyze me and beat me the hell up through my tent without leaving a trace. I would think it was enormous due to its strength, and the growling outside my tent and barking was not a dog. I'm telling you this really happened to me in southeastern PA on top of this huge hill. I'm still trying to find answers about what happened. A friend's encounter in Georgia, USA. When she was younger my wife had a therapist she saw regularly. He was formerly an MD in the Navy. He was also an officiant and ended up marrying me and her years later. Anyway he told her of a time that he encountered what he described as dogmen. This was the first time I had ever heard of them, and is what got me interested in investigating more cases of encounters. I don't have all the specifics on where exactly it occurred but it was a heavily wooded area somewhere in North or Middle Georgia. He and his wife had gone to a two-story cabin far out in the woods to vacation for a couple of days. They were far from the nearest town and there were no other buildings nearby. So what he told us is that he and his wife woke from sleep at night feeling intense dread. They made their way to the stairs and down to the first level and when they looked out the window they saw a creature staring back in at them that appeared to be a bipedal canine. I know that they weren't harmed, but they were definitely spooked and felt intense dread. I wish I had more details, but that is as much as I know. Northern and Middle Georgia is very heavily wooded and there are a lot of national and state parks. The terrain is mountainous and hilly so it's not ideal for farming, and there aren't many major cities for the same reason, so it's very easy to find large stretches of uninterrupted forest. I have heard of another encounter in South Georgia in one of the major swamps. I've also read about an encounter that happened just north of me in Dayton, Tennessee. The dog-like creature that stalked us in the camp. I'll change some of the names of the group because I don't want to break the confidentiality of their real personas. Everyone who hears camping goes with the happiness of new experiences and new adventures, some take cameras, other their favorite hobbies in our group we were posted in the camp deep in the woods situated in Bulgaria. Honestly, we have our beliefs and folklores that we have witnessed in ages ahead but what did we all saw was so damn different that even I can't explain it, until now. We prepared ourselves to have a good time, some booze and a couple of tracks up the mountain nearby, we arrived rather fast at the campus grounds as I was sleeping deep and didn't recognize until Mia shook me awake and I blinked away the sleepiness, walking out with our big backpacks we gathered around the elders and listened to the instructions that obviously will break later. Getting into the separate rooms for girls and boys we were all set up few days went like a flash and then that day when we were accompanied by two elders that led the way to their local campfire grounds it was far away from the camp so we were walking. Talking having a laugh few boys pulled a stupid scare prank and we were close to our destination but they say when there's someone staring at you and you feel their eyes boring into you, that was what I felt I always was a skeptic but now all my senses were high as hell. Coming closer to the open space with a huge campfire we all set up our little to-do list, some were finding branches and twigs, others were preparing the food for the meal, some were talking to the elders, and our group was done with all our orders we went to the watch point. It was like a watchtower but without the amenities, it was open and huge that it couldn't allow many people on, and in it, it was a breathtaking sight. Coming down I again felt being watched like an intense watch that makes you turn around so I did slowly and carefully as if not feeling its eyes on me. Nothing, there was nothing behind me or rather I haven't seen it so I went towards the campfire it was not dark it was around 13 pm so nothing scary to be honest but the feeling soon enough returned, I've always had a great hearing and if something moves, falls, 
makes a noise I turn my head always towards the said so direction. I heard thumps like someone or something was running on four legs, remembering it was a forest, after all, I stopped to see was it an elk, fox or something else but then the horror hit me the thump stopped as soon as I did, I was shocked so badly I didn't recognize my friend Mia trying to get my attention. Hey earth to Dana, the hell my dude? What did you see a bird or an elk? I shook my head and my brows rose in surprise as I spoke no damn idea Mia, maybe it's just my imagination, she laughed and dragged me towards the campfire as I kept glancing back and having a bad feeling about it as we all sat down I thought that maybe just maybe the hunger was making me hear things and yet something was off. One of the boys Nick decided to visit the local nature dub see you know to let it go, and strangely enough, he went with his plate with a good chunk of meat we all chatted already filled with delicious barbecued food as we saw Nick rushing back as if he saw a ghost we all looked at him as he explained pointing to the plate that as only the sauce remains of where his piece of meat was. I swear I'm not FG pranking you. I was taking a leak and I felt like something whooshed past me and I heard the sound of the damn plastic plate. So I turned around and saw that my food was gone. He had a bewildered look on his face, everyone even the elders suggested that it was a wild animal that stole it but the look in his eyes told something else. Some of the girls shared her piece of meat with him but yet we were a bit worried, after collecting all plastic and remained food into a trash bag that was set aside for us to take when we leave the campfire grounds, the elders suggested walking around a bit and show few other places with waterfall and caves. As we walked across the horse path looking at the indentations in the wet mud we saw a few rather strange ones and stopped to observe, they were wide as if bears or canines but how could it be so wide and big, shrugging it off we walked a bit further when the feeling hit me again, we were watched by someone or something as I turned my head I spotted a rather old treehouse as I alerted the others the group continued ahead not waiting for us we all walked towards the house and we saw a ladder it was just pieces of wood planks nailed to the tree heading up. We decided to climb up as we heard a few twigs being broken, and rustling as if someone was running around us we stopped and decided to shrug it off climbing inside the smell was of wet wood and dust, as we all climbed in Nick who was last to climb yelped and screamed get inside now. We all gathered further into the treehouse looking at him if he was a lunatic. We looked at him for an explanation as he was shivering and trembling, it was summer so we had our t-shirts on as he turned and said I saw something huge and big down there running past me. We all panicked so hard as we looked at him I whispered, it's a bear, right? He looked around frantically as one of the boys took out a knife which made me smile because it would be a damn toothpick towards such a huge animal. He gasped for air as we all tried not to panic and not to hit the fan, we heard some running around it was the sound of a four-legged animal if it's a bear could it climb in the house? My mind screamed, we all stood still as the running now was accompanied by the growl of it as I suggested it was a bear but it was not bone chilling as we hear the next sound. It was a mix of a howl of a wolf mixed with a human howling in insufferable pain, we all froze it felt like a damn horror movie, we heard something climbing up a tree as we all stood still covering in the back of the treehouse, looking out of the open window we all froze there was a huge a bear climbing up the tree, has it sensed us? Was it hungry? My mind was going a mile per second as I realized something. The bear was not even looking in our direction it was looking, down. I took a step closer to the window so did Nick we both looked confused, what was wrong with this bear I mean I'm happy it wasn't attacking us or eating us alive but, what, in the name of everything could have scared a bear, the answer came with such a loud snarl and growling sounds, accompanied by the thumps and scratches we both looked down, I wish I wouldn't have. This, thing was so huge it was at least 8 foot tall, it had a huge snout and really, really sharp canines, it was black and its ears were pointy as his lynxes, its fur was black and its eyes. Its eyes were yellow, we both stood like dumb idiots our brains going into Windows 95 mode trying at least to process the hell is going on. 
We didn't felt when the others came closer, all we heard was terrifying whispers and gasps. We all retreated from the window as we thought it was trained on the poor bear. We heard someone screaming our names as I relaxed in relief, peeking out to see the wolf-like thing retrieve. Its body shape was the strangest of all. It was close to the human body but more agile and more powerful. We tried to climb down as we heard some twigs falling and scratching as if next to us. One of the girls screamed bloody murder and we heard a thump and a bear running down the opposite side of the road. We all bolted down nearly stumbling and falling off as we saw our elders rushing towards us. We were paler than a paper sheet. Walking back we saw a rather peculiar moment. The bone fire was broken up the trash bag was ripped open and then the food of all contents was gone. The group stood there petrified and the elders checked for any animal around when found nothing we picked up the trash again and left. This time our group was ahead practically running towards the camp as the others mocked us we tried to play it off. As we ran back I felt it again the dread of being watched and thinking that at the campgrounds we would be safe we all headed towards the old bell tower. It was abandoned and the bell was ripped off. But the door was metal and heavy so we decided to close it just in case. Gathering up we all let out deep breaths and huffs, as some decided to hit a smoke before the elders came back and caught them but I think at this point nobody gave a damn. What was that thing? Said Elisa inhaling the smoke as if it would calm her nerves down no damn idea Al, it was something freaking bigger than the damn bear. Nick added still looking to the outskirts of the barbered fence. Next spoke John he was from the US and was an exchange student coming to visit and learn more about our country, and he gulped I it's not a tea thing. He hardly spoke as if something as a memory flashed across his face as he swallowed looking towards the dark forest it's a dog man. Everyone looked at him bewildered my grandpa met one when he was camping, he said it was terrifying even scarier than a horror movie. It was grey though but it had these yellow eyes that scared grandpa and he ran away leaving his tent behind. It was chasing after him, taunting him. Grandpa knew if he stopped he would die or worse so he hid in a cave and in the next morning a group of scouts helped him out of the forest, he said he'll never forget how terrified he was then. He even didn't return to retrieve his belongings. We all listened realizing how just lucky we were to be alive and in one piece. But our peace was disturbed once again by this terrifying howling scream everyone started to look around like damn owls trying to find the source and then I spotted it, standing on its hind legs it was something straight from Van Helsing movie making me gawk at the creature before me, it was sniffing the air and its ears were moving as it took a close step towards the barbed wired fence, we stood and looked at each other I felt dread filling my whole body, my hands were sweating and the pulse of my heart was skyrocketing if I was to face it I would be dead where I stand and only this realization made me whimper. Everyone was panicking once again as some of the guys slammed shut the metal door behind me alas I never broke the eye contact, slowly I tried to come back to my senses and breathe steadily. The said so dog thing or werewolf thing tilted its head to the side as a curious puppy would and bared its teeth making me tilt my head involuntary to the side as its head snapped towards the voices it bolted towards the depths of the forest. We were quiet for a moment and then I spoke we're not mental, I know it, people don't get mental at once, this is the real thing that was in the woods chasing the bear. Everyone agreed silently as we all walked back quietly every single one of us was quiet and antsy every single noise made us jumpy and nervous we locked everything we could and even tried it few times still scared of this dogman thing. Honestly, we all went back to sleep but I couldn't sleep that night as I was on edge turns out that everyone who was in our group was on edge and didn't have a good sleep. Outside was a full moon and I looked at it remembering these ambers looking back at me it didn't cross the fence, it didn't attack us it could but the most unusual it was curious about something and definitely, it was intelligent it didn't let me bat an eye as I walked to the window and this time I felt again watched and my whole skin was covered in goosebumps looking at the dark forest now I knew it was always there watching, studying and waiting but for what I had no idea. You see I was a skeptic and non-believer but this story made me and my friends scared to go camping even if it's a huge group I'd rather stay inside, but what truly makes a non-believer a believer is an experience of facing it yourself. 
The bear was enough for me to set the uneasiness in the depths of my soul. This is my story of the dog man or the werewolf. Whatever you call it still makes me wake up in cold sweat looking frantically around and checking my door and window locks. Sometimes I still have the feeling of being watched is it my paranoia or it really had followed me back I could never give the answer. The story was told to me by a close friend of mine. During a hunting trip in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, a relative encountered a six to seven foot upright canine that was walking about near their tree stand. This uncle was never again interested in returning. My story took place when I was a child. My family had a bunch of land near the Ottawa National Forest in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. My dad, two older brothers, and my uncle were avid outdoorsmen and were always going hunting and fishing on the family land. There was a little cabin on the place and that's where we would stay and spend several weekends a year. I wasn't really into hunting at the time but I liked to go and stay at the cabin. The event took place over a couple of days, but I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was one fall during deer season. We were all up at the cabin for the weekend. The guys would all go out hunting and I would stay behind at the cabin and make food for them when they all returned. I liked it because they would all leave for several hours leaving me to the cabin all by myself. It made me feel all grown up for a few hours. Like I was living by myself. My dad, my uncle, and my two brothers would all leave at the same time and go to the multiple hunting locations they scouted out on previous trips up to the cabin. I distinctly remember one evening when they all got back my uncle was acting a little strange. He didn't seem his normal joking self. He looked a little white and nervous. Normally he was quick to talk about what he has seen while out hunting. But not that night. He hardly talked at all. The next day, they all went out hunting again, and when they returned my uncle looked visibly upset. He began quickly moving around the cabin packing up all of his things and loading them into his truck. My dad and brothers were concerned and were asking him what he was doing. He was shaking and was yelling at them all to just leave him alone. He was done. He was going home. We all were a little concerned, like what gives? He said he was leaving and that we should too. My dad took him by the arm and led him out to the truck. I could see them in a loud verbal disagreement out by the truck. I couldn't make out what they were talking about but the discussion was heated. Finally, my uncle got in his truck and left in a big hurry. My dad came back into the cabin and, and told us that everything was all right and not to be too worried, my uncle had some things he needed to take care of back home. I knew this was a lie, but kind of forgot about it for a while. We stayed a few more days and then went back home. Fast forward to about 12 years later. My uncle was in a very bad automobile accident. He was hospitalized and died four days later. After the funeral, we all went back to my aunt's house and were eating, drinking, and just socializing with the entire family. At one point I found myself out in the garage where my father and bunch of other relatives were just hanging out when someone brought up a very strange story. My uncle Bill asked my father, hey do you remember that crazy story Jerry talked about up at the family cabin? My father said yes and that we probably shouldn't talk about that right now. And they kind of moved on. I was like wait a second. What is Uncle Bill talking about? What story? My dad kind of looked at me and said, do you remember the time up at the cabin when Uncle Jerry got upset and left the cabin in a hurry? I said yeah, actually I do remember that. He then told several of us that he had a strange encounter with something he couldn't explain. At that moment my Uncle Bill said, he saw a werewolf. We were all like what? My dad went on to say that he was correct. That evening my uncle Jerry said he was on the way to his tree stand when he came across something terrifying. He saw a large dark fur covered creature that looked like something from the movie The Howling. He said it was 6 to 7 feet tall and was walking around on two legs. What he saw was something demonic. Something not natural. Something not of this earth. 
This hulking beast was the most evil and terrifying thing you could ever imagine. It was pure evil. He could feel it in his bones. Whatever this thing was, it was standing in a clearing and was slowly walking upright just looking at its surroundings. Sniffing the air and slowly making its way through the woods. It had a purpose, but he didn't know what. It had this strange strength about it, both physical and metaphysical. Like it was in this world yet shouldn't be. He just watched it in shock not really knowing what to do. Yes, he was armed, but he knew that trying to use his rifle would be a bad mistake. He just stood there in awe of this strange and frightening creature. What was it? Why was it here? Was he losing his mind? He later told my dad that something is wrong with this place, this land. It's cursed and you shouldn't hunt here anymore and for God's sakes don't let your children around here anymore. Get out of here as quick as you can, while you still can. It didn't see him but he wasn't hanging around anymore. He gathered all of his things and left in a hurry never to return. In fact, after that event he rarely spoke to any of us again. He was an avid hunter and said it definitely was not a bear. He left that evening and never went back to the cabin ever again. I don't know what he saw and my dad said he didn't know either, but Jerry was different after that night. I wish I had more details. I miss my uncle Jerry, he was a kind soul. After listening to your show and several others, I think my uncle saw a dog man. Thanks for all you do. Michigan Dog Man. This happened when I was about seven years old to my uncle. He's no longer with us and I want to share his story. Growing up I lived in northern Michigan on 5,000 acres of farm slash ranch land that backed up into state land. Nothing but miles of forest and pasture could be seen. Needless to say it made us pretty tough and it takes a lot to spook us. We are all avid hunters, fishermen and outdoorsmen. Being the only girl I was raised as a tomboy and I'm just the same. My uncle went off to join the military becoming a senior NCO in a prominent special forces division of the US Navy. He was 6 feet 4 inches, built like a wrestler, obviously skilled in survival tactics and nothing rattled him. He was home on leave and went out hunting as it was deer season. I remember him coming in the house shaking and crying saying he saw something in the woods. My uncle never cried. He was tough as nails and would tear someone to shreds before he let them make him cry. My grandmother tried to get him to make sense but he kept saying he saw Bigfoot mixed with a wolf. My granny immediately got my grandfather and he rounded up the rest of the guys hunting my dad, a few male cousins, my uncle, who was still terrified but went because he didn't want to be labeled a chicken got all their shotguns and ammunition and saddled the horses to go clear the woods. Apparently they were aware of the dogman but I was blissfully young and ignorant. They told me to stay inside and for no reason was I to step outside of our house until they returned. I had never heard my dad or grandfather so serious so I hid in my room. Sunset comes and they still aren't back. I'm really worried at this point because they never stayed in the woods until after dark. Shortly I heard the sound of the horses running to the barn and their voices. I was so relieved. They looked troubled when they came into the house but didn't say anything probably to not spook me. At dinner my dad laid down the law I was no longer allowed to play outside or go to the barns alone. I had to have my grandfather with me at all times. Of course I was upset by this and felt my independence was being taken away but I obeyed. The next morning my dad and grandfather taught me how to shoot. I knew it was serious. I overheard the adults talking the next night. Apparently there were tracks where my uncle had his sighting bigger than any wolf could make but they were definitely dog tracks. As I said before we are avid outdoorsmen and hunters we can identify tracks easily but these couldn't be identified. About 8 feet up in a tree were claw marks. Nomi Bear could make those. We also found claw marks of about the same height on multiple trees throughout our property, had cattle mutilated and not in the way a coyote or bear would and it lasted that whole winter. We lost about 30 to 40 cattle that winter all of them mutilated. 
all with the same wolf slash dog tracks in the snow. I really feel like this experience changed my uncle. Who knows he did multiple tours in the Middle East for Desert Storm and OIF, Operation Iraqi Freedom, before he committed suicide. After that experience though he was never the same. He went from not ever drinking to never seeing him without a bottle of Jack and his eyes were always haunted. He changed his personality and never went out in the woods again. He quit hunting and he eventually just quit coming home to visit on leave. He didn't even come home for my dad's funeral two years later. It was heartbreaking to see him deteriorate the way he did. I truly believe he saw something out there and it ultimately killed him. A dog man attacked my friend. Before I jump into this story, you, the reader, should know a few things. First, I am not claiming ownership of this story. This happened to my friend and his two cousins. My friend just decided to share this story with me. Second, what you're about to read is very scary. Don't say I didn't warn you. And lastly, I feel it is necessary to tell the story how my friend told it. I.e. from his point of view. Let's jump right in. A few weeks ago my uncle and my two cousins came out to visit my mom and dad for a barbecue. We have one every year on the 1st of May because it happens to be my mom and dad's anniversary. So it's the 1st of May and my uncle and my two cousins get out to my house. We had just moved into back in February so we were all excited to have our first get together out there. It was really nice. We were situated on a mountain top with a decently sized yard that was completely surrounded by woods. My dad had plans to clear out a few sections of the woods so that he could put deer feeders out so he could have the chance of getting some hunting in out there. While he hadn't started preparing to begin cutting trees down he decided to test the water as he phrased it and put about 8 or 9 trail cameras in to see if there were any deer worth hunting this year. I had helped him out in setting up the trail cameras, finding good spots and figuring out what position they should be facing. Then that was the end of that. So while my dad and uncle were hovering over the grill me and my two cousins had decided to relieve our boredom by playing around in the backyard. We had a trampoline set up, the original owners of the house had decided to include their pool in the deal along with a volleyball court they made on the far side of the pool bordering the woods. So me and my two cousins are enjoying ourselves on the trampoline without a care in the world. After a short while my dad and uncle came to us and announced that dinner was ready. So we all went inside and grabbed a plate and then back outside to our back deck and sat down and ate. Me and my dad were the first ones to finish eating. My dad looked to me and suggested that we should go out and check on the trail cameras. We had done this many times before sometimes even checking three or four times a week just to see what was out there in the woods. However, this time would be a little different. Me and my dad are going around the property checking all the trail cameras. We got to the point to where we only hadn't checked one of them. But for some reason, we couldn't manage to even find it. After searching around for almost 10 minutes, we eventually found the exact tree it should have been on. I remember placing it on that specific tree, and it was one of those trees that once you saw it again after the first time, it was damn near impossible not to recognize it. So my dad came up to me and started looking around, questioning that I had put the trail camera on that specific tree. I told him several times that I was 100% positive that that was the tree I placed the trail camera on. So we start circling the tree looking for any signs of the are missing trail camera. While we were shuffling around, trying to find it, I kicked something. Hard. I tripped over myself and looked down at my feet to see what had tripped me. And there it was. Well, what was left of it, the trail camera. My dad came over to me and he saw it just as clearly as I did. The trail camera was completely and utterly destroyed. Upon further examination of the trail camera, we learned that the heavy duty ratchet straps we had used to secure it around this large tree, had been torn apart. Literally. It looked as though something had grabbed the trail camera and just ripped it completely off the tree and then just went to town on destroying it. My dad, 
thinking that whatever did this must have stepped into the range of which the trail camera could have taken a picture of it. He tried to open the trail camera but to no success. This trail camera, which was almost damn near indestructible, was damaged so badly to the point to where my dad couldn't even get it open. My dad, not wanting to admit defeat, grabbed his knife and exclaimed that he was getting that damn thing open to at least get the memory card. That was all he seemed to care about at that moment. So after a few minutes of forcing his knife into the trail camera he finally managed to get it open. It took him a second to fully realize where the spot for the memory chip was supposed to be in the tangled mess inside the trail camera. When he finally found the spot for the memory card, he pulled it out and to his utter disbelief, the card had broken into several different pieces while inside the trail camera. My dad was beyond pissed at that point, because not only did he lose a $150 trail camera, he also lost his only chance of figuring out what did this. Now even more pissed than before he said to let's go back to the house. He picked up the trail camera and we both heading back to the house. He told the others what had happened to the trail camera and then showed them. Fast forward to that night. My dad, my uncle, me, and my two cousins all went out into the woods. Just practically clinging to hope that one of the other trail cameras had spotted the thing that destroyed one of our cameras since me and my dad had checked them. My uncle went with my dad so me and my two cousins were together. So we begin checking every single trail camera we had left. So my cousins and I are heading towards the location of our third camera to just retrieve the memory card, because my dad had told all of us to just grab the memory card and he will search all of them together. We get about 15 yards away from our third camera and in an instant, a chill ran from the top of my head, all the way down to both my feet. I told my two cousins about this and they said we know. We feel it too. We all started panning. Looking to see if we could see anything at all. Then I picked up on something. In the direction we were heading to get to the camera I saw a figure. Me thinking it was either my dad or my uncle I called out to it by saying hello. Then it looked right at me and my cousins. I knew immediately that it was neither my dad or my uncle, because it had glowing red eyes. At first glance I thought maybe it was an animal like a deer. Thinking that it was just reflecting the lights of our flashlights back onto us. But that theory went straight through the window when we turned our flashlights away from it and then it stood up. I watched, in utter horror and disbelief as it stood up very slowly, from about the level a deer would be, to being about 9 feet off the ground. As me and my cousins were standing there in shock, it let out a deep guttural growl and started advancing towards us. I was the first to snap out of the sort of trance I was in and grabbed both of my cousins to try and get them to move so we could run. One of my cousins managed to get out of the trance as well and we both tried to get the other out of it as well. My other cousin finally showed a sign that he was out of the trance and just before I could utter the words to run as fast as we could, this thing leapt into the air and landed out top of the cousin that took longest to snap out of it. Myself and my other cousin fell to the ground as the creature landed then it let out a loud growl before getting off my cousin and grabbing him by his throat. It lifted him up off the ground and roared directly into his face before looking at my other cousin, the one who was just getting back to his feet. The creature threw the first cousin away from it and then hit the other cousin across the face causing him to go right back down to the ground. Then it looked directly at me. It took one gigantic step forward and lifted me off the ground as well. Then did the same roar it did to my cousin. Only much louder. I yelled for my cousins to run if they could. One cousin was helping his brother get back to his feet after being thrown and they looked at each other, then to the creature and decided there was only one thing to do. In desperation they each picked up a fallen tree branch from the ground and charged at the creature. One of my cousins connected a swing to its head while the other went directly for the arm the creature had me in. The force of the blow to the creature's head caused it to falter, while the multiple hits to its arm caused it to drop me. My cousins tried to get a few more swings into but the creature managed to right itself and caught both incoming blows going directly for its head. It grabbed both of my cousins one in each hand, then threw them away from it, 
causing my cousins my cousins to drop the branches they were using as weapons to fall back to the ground. All three of us got together and tried to run, but the creature swung one of its arms and connected to all three of our chests, causing us to fall down again. The creature reared back its head and let out the most terrifying roar I have ever heard then started to move towards us. Just then, a gunshot rang out, then another, and another. All three shots connected to the creature. I looked up just in time to see the creature fall to the ground, appearing to be lifeless. I look over my shoulder to see my dad and uncle, both standing there as white as sheets, both holding a gun in their hands. They both hurried over to me and my cousins and told us to run back to the house immediately, fearing the creature may not be dead. Both of my cousins booked it back to the house, whereas I did not. I wanted revenge. I wanted it dead. For good. I jerked the gun out of my uncle's hands and proceeded to empty the rest of the clip into this thing's chest. Once I was sure it was dead I hit it across the face with the shoulder stock of the gun and spat in its face and screamed how you like that you bitch. I handed my uncle back the gun which he immediately loaded another mag into it. I walked past my dad and started heading back towards the house with my uncle and dad following close behind me. We get to the edge of the woods and start making our way across the small field to get to the house. Then, out of nowhere, we heard several more growls and roars sounding almost exactly like the creature we just killed. Hearing this, then immediately my dad screamed at us to run. So we did. All three of us started to book it to the house as fast as we could. We hopped the about four foot tall chain link fence that made up the dimensions of our front yard and then ran up the stairs up onto the front porch. My dad and my uncle both turned and started firing their guns. Not at anything, almost like they were trying to scare the creatures off. That was, until one of them showed itself, then both my uncle and my dad shot it at the same time. It fell to the ground lifeless and then, everything went silent. No more growls or roars were being heard, nothing at all. Everything just went completely silent. All three of us made it back inside the house. And then that entire night, everyone in the house that knew how to operate a gun safely had one, in the hands or on their person. It stayed that way until the next morning. Then the next morning came around against everything that was screaming in the back of our minds. Me, my cousins, my uncle and my dad went out back into the woods. We were trying to see if we could find the bodies of the two creatures we had killed. To our disappointment, we found nothing. Except of course, the blood of the creature I myself had dumped the rest of a mag into. That was all we found. Just that one pool of blood. My dog man experiences. Good afternoon. Just wanted to give you a rundown of my experiences. As I stated in my previous post, I used to play in an old phone booth at my aunt and uncle's house. This is definitely where the encounter started although I can't say how as I have no memory of what I did while inside the phone booth. It was an old wooden thing, like you find at the back of a bar or something. I later found out it was from an old Chicago train station that got torn down. So the first encounter I recall was in 1985 or 1986, I was around 7 or 8. It was summertime, late in the day so around dusk. Not full daylight but not dark out yet. I was in the front yard playing catch with my cousin and the ball went past me and down the side of the house into the back. The yard was surrounded by a chain link fence that separated the yard from an old overgrown alley that was used as a road at one time. When I went to retrieve the ball I noticed some rustling in the brush. I'm thinking it was a cat or squirrel or something. As I got closer I noticed something moving very close to the fence. I thought it was a man at first. It was as big as a man, but covered in brownish hair. From what I could see its head was canine, snout ears, etc., but it had human-like hands. I couldn't really see the lower half of the body due to the weeds and grass. It appeared to be injured in some way the way it was moving. It was using the fence to drag its way down the alley. Hand over hand, just pulling itself. 
I stood and watched for what seemed like a long time but in reality was probably only a minute or two before running up to get my cousin. I told him I'd seen a monster in the alley. We excitedly talked about it before getting up the courage to head back and look. By the time we got back there, it was gone, leaving no trace other than the smashed down grass. I didn't think about it again for a long time. Flash forward to sophomore year of high school so 1994. In 16. I get home and head to my bedroom for a nap. I was meeting some friends back at the school later to see a football game or something like that. So I wake up and it's dark in my room, the only light is coming from the hallway because my door is open several inches. As my eyes adjust I realize I'm not alone. There are four or five of these creatures in my room, watching me. They are all six feet or taller, covered in dark hair, with canine facial features. Just watching. They don't move toward me, they don't communicate, nothing. I think to myself, I must be dreaming. I lay there for a bit, squeezing my eyes closed and when I reopen them, the creatures are gone. I convince myself it was a dream and go about my night. Next time it happens is about 2005 so I'm 27. Sometimes after work, some friends would meet at a local restaurant for drinks and food. I didn't work that night so my boyfriend and I headed up to meet them. Nothing out of the ordinary happened. On the way home my boyfriend are chatting about the day and what we are going to do that weekend, etc. I notice something ahead in the road and so I slow slightly. I'm thinking it may be a bag or some garbage or something but as we get closer I notice it looks more like an animal. At this point we are both silent and I'm almost at a complete stop. The creature stands up on hind legs and I now see that it is humanoid with canine features. It slowly turns its head toward us and then just kind of drifts away. It didn't run, it was just no longer there. Hard to explain. I made sure I asked my boyfriend to tell me exactly what he saw before I told him what I saw. I wanted to make sure we had seen the same thing. He described to me exactly what I saw. That was the last major encounter I had. Back to the phone booth. I always felt that the phone booth was connected somehow so I asked my mom. I asked her to tell me what I had said after coming out. What was I doing? She said I would just go inside and play around like little kids do. It was safe and they could keep an eye on me easily. I asked her to try to remember anything that might help me tie it together. After speaking to my aunt, she said they remembered. I would come out and tell them I had gone to visit the puppy people. While helping to tie things together, it really only served to raise more questions. Where did I go when I got in that phone booth? Dogman in Middle East. I had a few people reach out regarding this since I commented on it a few weeks ago. When I was serving in Afghanistan I witnessed some strange stuff. First of I did not see any creature but encountered some weird stuff. One of the roles I served was essentially a hearts and minds role in that we made an effort to get to know the locals and get them to look at us in a better light. Just simple things like giving out food, building things bringing the kids footballs act. One family we constantly met were a family of goat farmers. Over the weeks we got pretty friendly and would share stories through our translator. One day I was talking to him about his goats and how hard life is out here. He said it was fine but the only thing that bothered him was Bamit. I thought initially it was the local Taliban strongman or something but he said no at an animal. Now this next bit is said through a translator so bare that in mind he said it's the running wolf. Myself and the translator didn't really know what he meant but he just said again a wolf that runs like a man. He then asked us to follow him. Initially I refused but eventually relented as I felt he would not lead us to danger and it may offend him more not to. He led us to a cave about 30 minutes away. In this cave we found what looked like crude drawings on the wall. Nothing you could make out well but definitely something someone had drawn by scraping rock. But more disturbing was several gouged lines in the rocks. About a third of an inch deep and about a foot long. We had a joke about it but I tried cutting a similar mark into the wall with my knife but I couldn't do it. 
Bear in mind I've been powerlifting since 16 so I'm pretty strong but couldn't come close. The biggest red flag however was the remains of what I think was a goat carcass. Now this cave was about 300 yards up about a 60% incline. I don't know how a fox which is the only predator I saw out there could a, kill a goat b, drag it from the closet farm, 1.5 kilometers away, up that slope into the mountains. It freaked me out to be honest. For the remaining three months of that tour I heard noises a few needs a week sounding like a woman wailing. Might be something or might just be a grown man being scared by a shepherd's story. I'm not weighing in on if they are real or not but I did find this compelling. I know not strictly dogman so might not be right for this thread but someone might find it interesting. If you have any questions or more info please get in contact. My encounter. This happened a couple years ago at the time I was 17 and me and three of my friends had been up to a cabin in North Carolina. In the mountains we were celebrating the end of junior year of high school. It was just us four. First night we got there we heard some noises from outside the cabin at about 1.30 in the morning I did not want to look outside to see what it was. My friend did said they couldn't see anything so I looked out. Couldn't see anything. Next morning we went outside and saw some footprints. Footprints like I've never seen before and I hope to never see again. Fast forward to the night we decide to go outside and have a campfire. We're 17 18 year old kids joking around laughing having fun enjoying the summer when we hear a growl from the woods and the shrubbery and smaller plants around us start moving like they're in the wind. Even though there's no wind I look behind me and I see two amber eyes staring. I turn my friend to ask if he's seen it too. He looks at me pale in the face and asks me what the hell is that thing. I don't know what it is. All I know is it's massive and I don't want to find out. So we run inside the cabin and tell the other people that were there what we saw. They don't believe us so they look outside and it's standing there about nine and a half feet tall grayish black high. Very muscular with these massive claws and huge fangs. So they ran inside shut the door and we closed the blinds and tried to forget about a thing. Later that night I went up to bed I looked outside my window and it was out there staring directly at me. Needless to say I didn't get any sleep that night. The next day we packed up and left not wanting to spend it on a night in those woods. This is the first time I've told anybody about this. Because I didn't think anybody would believe what I saw. To this day the image of that creature staring into my eyes from my bedroom window still haunts me. Back in August or September my boyfriend and I were outside in my backyard and out of nowhere we heard very loud panting. It sounded like it was coming from the left side of us but it felt like we were surrounded by it. It was like a huge dog panting directly and my left ear also sort of vibrating all around us. Whatever it was we couldn't see it because it was behind some bushes. I screamed really loud because I've heard of dogmen through others experiences and that's what I thought it was. The thing continued to pan after I screamed so it wasn't scared off or phased at all by it. A few weeks before that my BF heard something that sounded like a shovel dragging on concrete. That is another noise people hear when these dogmen are around. Any thoughts of what it was or any similar experiences? Please share. On Monday, October 18, 2021 midday I took my 7 and 2 and a half year old sons to a state park 1.5 miles up the road from my house. Rock State Park Hidden Valley area. The park is small four parking spots and a half mile trail that follows a creek. The trail ends at a fork in the creek with a beach head about 20 feet long. Six people would be a crowd. Both of my sons are familiar with this park as it is in a rotation of three parks we choose from to go on a little hike once a week. The trail is moderate with some inclines, natural obstacles and occasional narrowing due to lack of maintenance. My eldest son is comfortable being 30 to 50 feet ahead of me while I pace my youngest. Nothing is out of the ordinary. 
Just a normal hike my eldest reaches the beach head 15 to 20 seconds before us. We approach the creek beach and my youngest is on my left starting to mess with rocks and throwing them in the creek. My oldest is 10 to 15 feet to my right messing around throwing rocks in the water. I bend down to cuff my pant leg and hear a blood curling scream from my oldest. I look up at him and he is screaming falling backwards feverishly kicking his legs. I follow his line of sight to across the creek. Perched on a large flat rock is an animal I could not understand. It was no more than 20 to 25 feet away and its dimensions seemed so large it looked as if it could leap the creek in one stride. A barrel chest with clear defined pectoral muscles shoulders and biceps no different than a man just a lot larger. Bulging eyes and a stubby snout like a hyena. It looked as it was in a sprinter starting position not an animal on all fours. Its thighs and hind end were noticeably large. The mass of this animal was unnatural. The ears faced forward with hair tufts on the side and tops of the head. The face was looked as if it was on high alert. Similar to when your dog has quick head movements because you're getting ready to throw a ball. It kept switching between my son screaming falling backwards into trail running away and me screaming picking up my other son. As I am frantically trying to get between it and my first son. It almost looks as it was in the lunging position. That or backing up. My perspective was head on before turning into the trail. I get to him and we are out of direct sight. I yell at son number one to run. The weirdest thing would happen. The seven-year-old would start sprinting and crying and after 30 feet he would turn around almost in a complete daze not understand what's happening then I would have to yell at him again to run. He would run, cry stop, dazed. This happened three times. I still don't understand how shock or fear could do that. The animal did not follow us down the trail. The thoughts going through my head I wouldn't wish on my enemies. It was only time in my life where I knew I could not protect my children. The buck knife on my hip was no better than a pillow. The moment I told my seven-year-old he might have to take his younger brother's hand and get back to the car as fast as you can has left a scar deeper in my mind than this unexplainable animal. I apologize for the story structure and horrible grammar. Even though there was no mistaking what I witnessed, it doesn't matter. Trying to explain this to anyone is pointless. I like to think I am considerably self-aware. I cannot understand why my mind is forcing itself to debunk what I saw. I was undoubtedly afraid but my focus was crystal clear. Kids, safe, at all costs. I was laser focused on my surroundings and what was in it. None of my emotions distorted my vision or made me misinterpret my surroundings. I never encountered Dogman or Wolfman, only Bigfoot when I was a 10 or 11 year old. Ever since after that I have had PTSD about sleeping at night, about going into any forest alone, going into any forest at night. I used to have nightmares about the encounter where I try to scream but nothing comes out. I would always wake up terrified after waking from one of those TBH. Though there was one night when I was a kid around the same age I encountered Bigfoot. I was sleeping when a loud growling from outside the window woke me, I screamed for my mom when she came into the room I asked her to turn the light on, tbh I was afraid to sleep that night. So perhaps a dogman or a wolfman was trying to get me to look towards the window that night. I do wonder what would have happened if I had decided to look toward the window that night. A French woman and her friend are in a mountain forest near Jura, France when they encounter a upright canine cryptid while dog walking on a wooded pathway. Was it a dog man? I would like to share what happened to me in mid-April 2015. It was the end of the afternoon and the light was good. I had decided to take a little walk in the Jura Mountains forest, eastern France, where I live, with a friend and my little dog. We chose a place where I parked my car and we began to walk in. It didn't take long before I began to feel nervous. 
As we were walking we heard a horrible noise. It sounded like doves, but they were not singing, but they were screaming. It was the first time I have heard this noise. I laughed and said to my friend, I feel like they don't want us in the forest for some reason. We pushed on and the path was wide as we got further along. Suddenly, I noticed something moving down the track to the side of us. I realized it was an animal and I thought it was a large dog. The color was very black. I was upset and I told my friend I'd rather go back to the car. I didn't want my little dog to cross what I thought was a big dog off the leash. Luckily, I had my little dog on a leash. I started to turn around and return to the car, but my friend stayed and watched to see if she could place the rogue dog without an owner. I was walking for a few minutes when I heard my friend screaming run. Run. Without looking back, I accelerated my pace and arrived at the car out of breath. I put my little dog into the car. Before I got in the car, I looked down the path and I saw a deep black colored creature walking into the forest away from us. I was so surprised and shocked, I couldn't believe it. I could only see the top up to the shoulders of the creature. My friend who joined me at the car explained to me what she saw. She said that this creature moved by slipping at high speed along the side then seemed to get its momentum and straighten up onto its hind legs. My friend told me, and this is what I can confirm, that she was over two meters tall. We couldn't see its eyes. The creature stopped when it saw my friend. They looked at each other for a few seconds, then the creature decided to turn into the wood. My friend told me it had a dog's head, and the ears were pinned down. This creature had a muscular body, torso and thighs, that was covered with deep black hair. We were shocked. We later decided to go back to the forest and see if there was an explanation to all this, but didn't notice anything strange that we would answer this puzzle. And then I told my friend, we should try to get back to this place before nightfall. So, we did this two weeks later. It's strange, you see, because, when we got out of the car on the evening visit we immediately felt something was wrong. The atmosphere was very different. There was complete silence. We began to walk and after a few minutes, I felt anxious again. I decided to go back and my friend tried to push on into the trees but she also came back running. The creature was there again. It was standing in the woods, looking at us. I had not seen the creature this time thankfully. We would like to be courageous enough to take a picture of the creature. I know that we are not the only ones to have seen this dogman, and we are sure that it is what we saw. We learned that someone else saw it as well a few days later. So I tell some friends to be careful if they decide to go into any forest especially if this forest is abnormally silent. As I do with everyone who comes forward I asked if they had ever experienced anything else unusual or unexplained either in this area or at another point in time. This is not the first time I have had a strange meeting in the forest. The first dates back to five or six years previously in August. I never heard of the name Dogman until a year ago. I must tell you that I have always loved nature, fields and forests since my childhood. I always went to the woods a lot. But that year, while I was going to fetch mushrooms, I felt uncomfortable without understanding why. Several times, I went back to the car running. I regained my senses then found myself confused and then I understood what was bothering me. It was the abnormal total silence in the middle of summer. One morning, I arrived early and got on a trail. I saw a black mass at the end and I thought it was a tree stump. I continued to search for my mushrooms and gradually moved closer to the tree stump. When I looked up, my heart started thumping so hard I felt like I could hear it outside my chest. I did not understand what I had in front of me, what I was seeing with my own eyes. Imagine a human being squatting, with their head on their chest sleeping. But it was not a human being. It was covered with black hairs everywhere. It was not a boar. It was not a badger. I did not understand what it was and especially as I had never felt in my life such a feeling of panic. I started backing up, praying that this creature would not wake up and I ran away without turning around. I have never been able to return to the forest after I made the observation of the creature I saw and told you about. In the meantime, 
I had learned the dogman's story, that people were seeing them and that they could be dangerous. In April, I was with my friend. My friend is a medium and can see and experience the dead. So, I think that if there is connection. Since I have known her I'm starting to see some weird things on my lot in front of my house with my camera at night. My little dog is also seeing and reacting to things I do not see with the naked eye. When he growls, if I take a picture in the dark, there are orbs, colored tubes, shapes that move. As far as the dog man is concerned, it's a very real creature. This story disturbs me. I really want to know, but I'm scared to go back. Yet at no time did it show any aggression. It could have arrived on us without problem. It was moving fast with long strides. I know that I will return to this forest despite my fear but I will not go alone. My friend went back to her home in the north of France. When she was face to face with this creature, a small inner voice pushed her to go with it, but her survival instinct took over. My friend told me she remembered a past life experience. She was hunted in the forest by humans. She had two wolves that accompanied her, a white one and a black one that protected her. When she was captured as a witch the people killed the wolf in front of her cruelly. Potential Dogman Sighting So I live in central Michigan, about 20 minutes north of Lansing, I was on my way home from work, it was about 1.45 in the morning. I was going about 55 and saw something about 200 yards away stand up on two legs out of the ditch on my passenger side take three to four running steps and completely clear a 24 road, and got about six to seven of air, it landed on the other side of the road, went down to all fours and took off running across the field on my driver's side, I slowed down to see if I could get a look at it and it was big, black and fast. It cleared 150-ish yards in a matter of seconds and ran into a stand of trees in the middle of the field and I lost sight of it. There was a decent amount of moonlight but all I could see was a rough outline, it had to have been at least 8 tall as the ditch is 3 to 4 deep and I could see the torso and head poking out of the ditch before it jumped. I don't know exactly what I saw but I feel like it fits the description of a dogman. The situation started around midnight on a Saturday night in 2007 when the witness was coming home from a friend's house in Benzonia, Michigan and taking the back way home to Traverse City. He stated that while traveling on Cinder Road, several miles outside of the town of Bendon, Michigan, he observed a pair of eyes reflecting off his headlights ahead of him. Thinking that it was probably a deer alongside of the road, he began to slow down. As he got closer however, he stated that the object was much larger and much darker than a deer. He said that by this time, he had slowed to around 30 miles per hour and was at that point several hundred feet from the creature which still hadn't moved. As he approached further, he stated that the only way he could describe the creature was being similar to a very large dark wolf. However he observed that this thing wasn't on four legs, but was upright his back two legs standing near a road killed deer. He estimated that the creature stood a little over six feet tall and had very dark fur. He stated that by now, he was going slow enough to bring his truck to a stop in the road and observe the creature which had not yet moved and was still staring at him. He mentioned that for a brief second, he believed that the object was a giant stuffed animal put there as some kind of prank due to the fact that he had never seen anything like this in his life, and that he was able to drive up on it as close as he was, without it having moved an inch. Before he could finish that thought, the creature then dropped to all four legs and sprinted across the road and disappeared into the woods on the other side of the roadway. The witness was frozen in his seat for a minute wondering what the heck had just happened. He stated, whatever that was, it was for real. As perplexed as he was that night over what he had seen, he was deathly afraid to go wandering into the woods to investigate further. The witness was asked if the animal had made any sounds before it disappeared and he said that he did not hear it make any noise. He was also asked if it could have been a bear and he stated, 
absolutely not. He is a bear hunter and regularly hunts in the Upper Peninsula, so he obviously knows what bears look like up close. White Dog Man I live in Minnesota and had an encounter in August of 2021 near a burial ground. It was just after dusk and my friend and I were leaving a fishing spot near the river. We saw what looked like a very large animal on four legs. Its body was white and the eyes were either very reflective from my headlamp or glowing white. It looked larger than a wolf but unnaturally skinny. It stared at us and we both felt like it wanted to attack us. I yelled at it to try and scare it away but it yelled back in what sounded like my voice. That was the moment when I realized it was not an animal. We were able to walk away and it never attacked us. My friend had the same experience. The only difference is that I was unable to make out any facial feature because its eyes were so bright. She said it appeared to have a wolf-like head. Could this be a dog man? From what I read it sounds similar. Two unusual cryptid canine encounter accounts. A tribe of four or more large humanoid wolves in California and a red-eyed bipedal wolf-like creature seen in Suffolk County, Long Island, New York. The following accounts were recently forwarded to me, it looked like a werewolf. Growing up in the Northeast, I've seen pretty much every known animal that exists but on this day I encountered an animal that I have never seen before and that I hope I never see again. I was deer hunting on a cold December evening back in 2005 in California. I had walked to my tree stand about 3 p.m. that day. My stand was about a fourth of a mile from the road which isn't too far. I climbed up and got settled in for a few hours to see if I could get my first buck of the year. I hadn't seen much action and it was getting to those last few minutes I like to call, the best time. I noticed the woods went silent, which I knew meant there usually was a large animal present. I just didn't know what kind of an animal or what nature. So, off to my right side, probably 100 feet or so, I heard something heavy walking towards me. I was thinking it was probably a big buck. What I saw next gave me nightmares for months. The only way I can describe it was it looked like something off of a werewolf movie. I didn't know what to do. I was in shock, like I couldn't even move. This animal or whatever you want to call it, came to within 30 yards of me walking on two legs. Now I had a .308 Magnum rifle with me, but honestly, I was afraid to move. After it went by me and over the hill, I drew a sigh of relief, like, thank God, it's gone, or at least I hope it is. After it went by I thought to myself, what the hell was that? Now at this time there was probably 15 to 20 minutes of light left and I didn't know whether to get down or wait. About two minutes later I heard more branches, something coming from the same place the first one came from. Then I saw three more of these creatures following on same path. Now these three were walking on four legs but these things were huge. To me to them they looked gigantic. If I had to guess I'd say they were about one foot taller than a deer would be and guessing they would weigh about 200 to 250 pounds, that's how large they were. I just sat there so still, so quiet that I don't think I even breathed. I texted my buddy who was about 300 yards away what I had seen. I don't know if he believed me or not but I've never returned to that place again. Me, my brother, and mom saw it during one of my brother's baseball games, which was on a field right next to the Pine Barrens, in Suffolk County, Long Island, New York. If we faced the field, the Pine Barrens were directly behind us. It was around 7 p.m. and dark out, so it was somewhat covered by the trees, but I could make out a silhouette of a what looked like a human that was hunched over and trying to remain low profile, but with a wolf's head and fur. It was hunched in a way that you could tell it was bipedal, and was about four foot tall while hunched over. It had glowing red eyes, which was the only reason that I was able to notice it was there in the first place due to all the woods being in the way. It stood about 100 feet away and stayed there for about 15 minutes, just watching, 
occasionally moving to slightly to one side or the other, like it was scouting us out. I told my mother, but she just told me and my brother that it was probably just a car's brake lights and that our mind was overreacting, and we were both young back then, so we accepted it. When I got older I brought it back up to my mom about what I saw and she said she saw it too and saw the wolf face and glowing eyes, but didn't tell me because she didn't want us to freak out. I should also mention that there were no roads that led to the wooded area where I saw the creature, so it was physically impossible for a car or anything to get through the hundreds of feet of dense pine barren forest. But again I was young, so I just took my mother's word. Real Life Dog Man Encounter Encounter 1, my dad was young and used to be a DJ. He was in his friend's house when his friend left him alone in the house. A tall dog head man body creature came out of the kitchen, chased him, he fell leaving out the door and it grabbed his heel but he kicked free. Now you may say maybe his friend scared him. Possibly but how do you explain Encounter 2? Encounter 2, my dad, much older now went in his basement to look for something. He noticed a box move. Boxes were stacked up. A dog head man body creature steps from behind the boxes and chase my father upstairs. He slammed the door and the thing hit the door. My oldest brother went to check but found nothing. In counter three, my dad was a war vet. It is possible he suffered from PTSD and maybe imagined the creature. What's strange is how is what he described the same as what many others have described in their encounters. When my dad would be asleep sometimes he would have night terrors of vicious dogs trying to attack him. Could that have been the reason he seen the dogman creature while wide awake? My dad could draw really good. What he drew was similar to other drawings of the creature. Except, he said its head looked more rat than dog. Several incidents involving sightings and encounters with cryptid canines in County Durham, UK in Northeast, England. These involve an upright canine and an earlier werewolf experience. The following accounts were recently forwarded to me, I live in the city of Durham in Northeast England, County Durham. I often go walking with the dog in the early hours and have seen a couple of scary but interesting creatures in my travels. However, when I have told people about these incidents, they laugh at me. The first incident, I was walking in passageway leading up to the cathedral. The dog stopped in her tracks and started growling. I got my torch from my coat pocket and put it on. I saw a dark, furry upright dog-like figure running at a fast speed away from me and it headed towards the river bank. I followed it down the passage onto the river banks and saw it run towards Previn's bridge. It then ran up to the road where I heard a car slam its brakes and stop. I ran up to the road. No sign of the creature. The car's driver was shaken, as she said it ran at the car and jumped over it with ease and ran up towards Potter's bank area. Incident 2, I was in a small wooded area known locally as Maiden Castle. I have noticed on numerous occasions, things like broken trees that couldn't be broken by a human being. Camp-like structures and sticks randomly placed in and on the ground. I was walking around the part of the wood that looks over the river with a good view of Pellaw Woods, Old Durham Farm and over towards Sherburn Beck and Sherburn House. As I walked, I checked my watch and it was about 3.35 am in June and was fairly light. The dog started barking and jumping about. At first I couldn't see anything as I looked around and then I heard a deep grunt and heavy footsteps. I then saw a large tree shaking as though it was very windy, but it was the only tree moving like this as the weather was mild and not windy. I couldn't see what was making the tree shake or make the grunts and footsteps even though they were getting closer. I ran and the dog followed me towards the old Winnie Hill school and back into built up area. These events haven't put me off walking early in the morning like this. I am just more curious to what they are. Name withheld. There have been other cryptid canine sightings and encounters in County Durham, 
including the following, the witness describes a childhood incident that involved her and her brother just before Christmas 1979. The witness estimates she was around four years old at the time and her brother would have been seven. They lived in a two-bedroomed house in County Durham in Northeast, England. Peter Lee was built in the late 1940s after the war for those who needed housing. This is her statement, I was about four years old when the most terrifying incident of my life occurred. I shared a bedroom with my brother at the time and he is three and a half years older than myself. On this particular night we were still awake in the very early hours. Though I don't remember the exact time, my brother asked me to go downstairs with him to get a drink of water as he'd kept us both awake during the night due to a cold and he now wanted a drink to help him stop coughing. It was I think around 1.30 am when I reluctantly agreed to go downstairs with him only because I was too scared to be left in our room alone. We got out of our beds, switched on the light and stepped out onto the small landing in the dark. It was only when we reached the top of the stairs and were about to descend that we saw what was on its way up the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs with one foot on one stair and the other foot on the next stair and its left hand on the banister was a creature which could most aptly be described as a werewolf. It was the size of an average man or maybe taller and it was covered in dark fur and it had large slanted green eyes which seemed to glow. We both ran back to our room after standing paralyzed by fear for what seemed like the longest time. We huddled together screaming hysterically until we woke our parents up. Both of our parents made a tour of inspection of the whole house and reported that there was nothing there. Nothing was out of the ordinary and they saw no creature. The brother remembers the creature's eyes were glowing red rather than green and he believes that the creature had either ears or horns on its head. He goes on to say in his account of the experience that there were stories at the same time of a werewolf seen by another child in the cellar of this home. Let me say first and foremost, I'm a man of logic and explanation. I never believed in ghosts or other cryptic beings really in my life but something happened the other night that really made me feel weird. So I live somewhere in between country and town here in Florida and see an abundance of wildlife. Foxes, coyotes, raccoons, all very normal to see. Since there being a large fox population around here and most people having chickens, everyone has large dogs including me. I have a 70 pound boy and a 60 pound girl pit bull. They're fearless. They know this is their property and they protect it as such, alerting me if they hear something. And if they do, I open the door and they run out to chase off whatever it is. The other night, I woke up randomly and it was disturbingly quiet outside. Like not a single cricket. And my dogs were not on my bed like they usually are. All of a sudden, a howl like I never have heard went off like a siren that sent a chill down my spine. Like a deep yell almost, but definitely from an animal. I turned the lights on in my house to see my pit bulls at the back of their dog crate shaking. I've never seen a look on my dog's face like that before. Purely terrified. So I turned all the lights back off grabbed a flashlight and looked out my back window. What I saw about 200 yards off by a tree line near the back of my property was a dog thing, I vaguely saw it but it was very similar to a hyena build with a large amount of fur on its neck, like a mane almost and skinny back legs. Its head looked very wolf-like, with erect ears and a large skull. It was huge. It was so black it was hard to make out distinct characteristics, but its presence scared basically any living thing that was around it seemed that night. The next morning I went to the spot I saw the animal but saw no tracks or hair or anything, but I know what I saw and never saw anything like it before. Has anyone in Florida seen anything like this? We've been having a lot of dead dogs in the area. Dogs that are large and are being killed by something. Other people think it's the coyotes or a feral dog, but I think it's that thing I saw. Just seeing my dog so terrified really scared me.
Sorry in advance for my lackluster English, but I'm a German dogman fan and recently heard about an encounter in southern Germany via an old paranormal forum in German. I always thought it was a strictly American phenomenon, so I of course was thrilled to hear about a German encounter. To translate for the Americans here, a girl's grandpa died recently and the family cleaned out his old house. In a box under his desk the girl found a locked box filled with photos. One is of a blurry dog man, there still is a version in the thread on page 10. She showed it Io her father and recalled, that he was playing at home and his grandpa, an avid forester and wildlife photographer came home bathed in sweat, yelled at the girl's grandma, yelled at her father and forbade him to ever enter the forest and shut himself into his study for two days. The girl's grandfather was always a kind man and his sudden shift in temper was so strange to the girl's then six-year-old father. Later the grandpa apologized and pleaded with both his son and wife to never enter the woods again and sell their part of the woods for good, they owned a sawmill, so that wasn't a light-hearted decision I'd imagine. When the girl cleaned the house an old neighbor came over for a chat. German elders are notorious gossips, after all. When the old woman was shown the picture she recalled that it was customary in her day to sleep with closed windows, even in summer and that her parents told her to stay out of the woods because something, a child eater, the old woman was told a name but couldn't recall it, supposedly dwelled there. I was quite fascinated by the story and thought I'd share it with you. In return I would like to know, suppose that I want to, get acquainted with one of the beasts, or to look in Germany? Are there more encounters? I know FRLM the Moorbach monster and Veable von Bedberg, also heard from the Hamburg encounter on Vic's podcast but that is BS. If a werewolf were to dwell in Germany, it would have to be in the south or east. Northern Germany is just too developed and flat. I have posted this a few times elsewhere, but this is something that will forever stick in my mind. I used to go to camp with my dad at a seasonal campground from 2005 to 2007 in upstate NY in the middle of Adirondack forests, and about a 20-minute drive from the closest town. It is now an agricultural farm and closed for unknown reasons. Anyway, families would bring their campers here and just leave them yearly. We were one of those families that did this. Luckily. There were other teens there around this time and we all really hit it off, we ranged from 13 to 17 years old within those years. This story takes place in the summer of 2006. A few of my camp friends and I were bored at around 1 pm one day, so we decided to hike into the woods that were behind all the campsites. We'll call my friends Jan, Bridget, Helen, and Aster. There were some well-traveled trails not far in, but we had already walked them many times. We decided to cut across the trails and go deeper into the woods. Eventually, we end up in an uphill, 30 foot wide clearing that had what appeared to be a car to the right in the distance. Aster immediately sprints to the car and exclaims that it is indeed a very old, very rusted and abandoned car. The rest of us walk to our very enthusiastic friend. I remember feeling something was very off about that car and requested that we all get away from it. Aster laughs and jokingly says it could be rigged with bombs. Bridget hit him in the arm and yells at him shut up. Get away from that car. Who knows what could be inside it. Odd, I thought to myself, maybe she feels the same way I do. We start to walk past the car upward toward what looked like a larger clearing. Helen grabbed my right arm and walked beside me seemingly terrified. Me being about 15 at the time, I welcomed her clinging to my arm and really didn't notice her terror. As we reached the large clearing, the ground flattened. Directly in front of us, there is a pond that is completely still. To the left of us, there's a yellow, two-story house that seems to be abandoned. This clearing is completely surrounded by the rest of the woods. Upon seeing this, I remember the feeling of dread washing over me. Meanwhile, Aster and Jan are running toward the house. Bridget, Helen and I all called out to them and told them to come back and not go near the house. Instead, they noticed an open window and they both climbed inside. 
As soon as Bridget saw them doing this, she yelled out fine. If you two want to have sex in some creepy house, be my guest. Her scream seemed to fall flat with no echo, almost like it was blocked and couldn't make it to the house. It was eerie. Bridget finally looked over at Helen and I sounding defeated. She said, come on, let's just go back to camp. This place is messed up. We concur and start to head back toward the downward smaller clearing when we hear what sounds like Jan's scream. We look back to see Aster and Jan are already out of the house and almost to us. They are both whiter than freshly bleached sheets and are motioning for us to leave. The hike back to camp was pretty uneventful, but Aster and Jan refused to tell us what they saw in there. Aster was still trying to act silly and cool, but he kept glancing behind us. Jan didn't say a word the entire time. We got back to camp and it was 5.30 p.m. It really didn't feel like we were gone for that long. Whole thing was weird. We all agreed we'd meet up later that night after we ate and showered etc. Later that night, around 10.30 p.m., the same group of us all met up near the registration building because it had a light similar to a street light. We decided to head down into a field that was at the entrance of the campground beside the dirt road leading from the road back to camp. It was a new moon that night and we could see the stars more clearly than ever before. It was the brightest I have ever personally seen them. We all exchanged spooky stories in that dark field for quite some time. For some inexplicable reason, all five of us stood up at the same time and began to walk back to the dirt road heading back to camp. As we reached the light by the registration office, we all then simultaneously turned around and the light above us flickers out. We all see a tall, bipedal figure moving in the field we were just in. It moved across the field quickly and silently. Chills went up and down my spine and it felt like the cold was trying to reach into my brain itself. The figure was darker than darkness itself and appeared to be taller than all of us, hunched and almost appeared to have spikes protruding from it in some way. We were frozen. None of us moved at all until the light above us suddenly came back on. The figure was gone, but it was unnaturally cold still for a summer night. We all ran to our respective camps. Fast forward to winter 2009. I was telling an ex-girlfriend of mine, let's call her Kitty, about the above story. She is the type of girl that says that she's very sensitive to paranormal events and is always intrigued about them as opposed to being afraid most of the time. She somehow convinces me that she needs to go to the camp I used to go to, but it has been closed and is now the agricultural farm I mentioned above. I decided to drive her and I up there one night in my 2000 Buick Century Limited. Mind you, this car was a beast and could make it through snow with ease due to a really nice traction control system and winter tires. We arrive around 10.30 pm and the dirt road isn't plowed out, no surprise. I wasn't worried and decided to drive in anyway. My car's a champ and is going through just fine. I am passing the registration building and get that same feeling of dread I felt long ago on that day at the house. The engine cuts. The car's power is gone. The car refuses to start. I look over at my ex and she's staring straight ahead there looking at us. What the? I try to start the car again and it starts normally, but my traction control is no longer working and the time has been reset to 12 o'clock. The car is spinning the tires somehow. We're still stuck. My headlights were on and I happened to look at the trees and see multiple of the same figures my camp friends and I saw, running between the trees in the distance and my blood went cold. I yelled I don't need this, I'm getting us out of here. I turned the car off and started again. Traction control light is gone and I am able to move the car. I slam it into reverse and reverse down the dirt road back to the main road that will head back into civilization. I slam it in drive and the supercharger and that baby was one of the sweetest and most relieving sounds I had heard that night. The drive back has forest on the same side of the road as the camp for pretty much 10 of the 20 mile trip to town. My ex is staring out the window. Out of nowhere, she mutters something quietly. I tell her I can't hear her and ask if she's alright. She doesn't look at me, but I am able to make out what she said this time they're following us. They want us. 
They're the most evil thing I have ever felt, and they want us to go into the house with them. I tell her that it's going to be okay and that we'll be safe soon. I tell her to stop looking out the window and just focus on clearing her mind. We made it back into town and I went into the closest gas station that was open and grabbed water and a snack for both my ex and I. I asked the clerk what time it was because both of our phones were dead and I wanted to reset my clock in my car. It's currently 3.49 AM, you sure are out early. I just nodded and paid for my things. I brought my ex to my place so she wouldn't get in trouble for getting in so late since she lived with her mom. We never spoke of it again and broke up about a month later. I have told others about this story and I have had many tell me to bring them there. I refuse to bring them or even tell them where this place might even be. Nothing can explain the weird things in that place and I shudder to this day still thinking about it. There's something in my garden. I live alone have done for about a year now after breaking up with my ex, and it's been mostly great to have my own space in my own house where I'm free to do whatever I want, whenever I want. That said, I spend most of my time in the evenings upstairs playing video games and watching YouTube videos. I don't really have a social life, but that's okay with me. I've never felt uneasy in my own house, until about a month ago, when I went to the kitchen at night to make a drink. Now, my kitchen is overlooked by my overgrown garden, which is in turn overlooked by some woods. It's a fairly rural neighborhood, and it's very quiet at night, which makes it a friendlier environment for some wildlife to come out. I'll often see foxes and deer, and I've been woken up at night by the scream of a fox at 4 a.m. once, and they like to hang around outside the front of my house because there's easy access from there to my back garden and then into the woods. My kitchen has this big window which looks right into the garden, but at night when the lights are on, I can barely see more than a few feet ahead of the window as it acts sort of like a mirror. Well, on this particular night, the few feet ahead of me that I could see was all this thing needed to make itself visible to me. I hadn't noticed it until I looked up and out of the window after making my drink. It was a bipedal creature, skinny but very tall with hind legs, and had no hair. It sounds ridiculous to say this but it looked similar to the werewolf Lupin transformed into in the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, only taller and more humanoid, and its mouth was tiny but protruded, similarly to a canine's. It had no ears from what I could see. It just stayed there looking at me with these completely white, tiny eyes. Its head was tilted to the side and its bottom jaw was slightly open. I didn't even know how long it had been there. I was in the kitchen for about a minute before I even bothered to look out of the window. I just froze. You think you can rationalize what you do in situations like this, but I was frozen in terror. I was telling myself to move but my body felt icy cold, I couldn't do anything. Eventually, after like 10 seconds, it felt much longer, I managed to move and ran out of the room, not daring to take my eyes off the creature and as I did so, its head rotated to follow me as I left to the comfort of the upstairs, which was the creepiest thing about it. Since then, which was about a month ago, I've not gone into my kitchen at night, save for a few necessary occasions. I'm preparing everything I need before it gets dark, and then staying upstairs for the rest of the night. If I absolutely need to go in the kitchen, I'll rush so that I can get out ASAP. That feeling you get when you turn all the lights off before you have to go back upstairs, and feel like you're going to be chased upstairs by some unknown entity? That's the feeling I get when I need to go in my kitchen at night. I lived in the boonies of Nee PA for a long time and never had any encounters myself, just a lot of weird energy fluctuations and extremely bad GTFO right now vibes in some places. When I was in my teens one of my merit badge assignments in the Boy Scouts was to spend a night with a buddy in the middle of nowhere after the counselors dropped us off. We were in super deep that time and still managed to sleep great. I know there's a ton of sightings and encounters just 3-4 to four hours from here to the west, PA is a bit of a long state 
but I'm fairly confident they haven't migrated this way yet. If they're a DM out this way they keep very low profiles. My dad's place is nestled in the most densely populated white-tailed deer county in the country, at least it was for many years running, and the population is still a nuisance. They have no natural predators here anymore. If DM were here there'd be significantly less deer and other critters, fauna is just everywhere in the knee. I also did a lot of exploring slash day trips into some deep, nicely hidden mountainous areas with creeks and waterfalls and caves in Jersey and talked with some of the local farmers who spend all day patrolling their 500 to 800 acre plots and they haven't seen a single thing ask you. Remember, farmers know every twig that gets broken on their land. Not a single odd thing to report. Actually I got permission to live in the woods and make a small camp on a 20 acre plot that was completely surrounded by other several hundred acre plots, just a few small country hideouts and big horse range near some mountains. I lived back there for a few months one winter season totally alone and never had any issues. A crow would intentionally wake me up at the same time every morning. One night I got kinda scared though. It was a really quiet night, too quiet and the horse breeders dogs went apes at something near the border where the two properties converged. Whatever it was, was only 60 feet from me, but out there it's so dark at night you can't see anything past the fire. Regardless I was completely on the ground in a little survival shelter I made out of fallen trees and a tarp. Nothing messed with me for three months. I used to be really, really into late night excursions. I'd fix up my pack and head out at 11 or 12 and come home an hour before sunrise all throughout the summer months. I'd go totally alone. Granted, I wouldn't do now about 85% of the stuff I did in my teens and 20s just because, but I figure if I was to be accosted by a large, aggressive cryptid out here in Nee PA it would have been during one of my many quite brazen solo adventures. This part of the country doesn't have much to be scared of except bad humans and alien abductions. I have a strong, strong gut feeling that this area won't be so safe and innocuous in the near future. Furthermore, there's definitely something in the Pine Barrens that isn't friendly. Pine groves in general, I've noticed, have something rather ominous about them. I don't stray into large pine forests at all anymore. Dogman or Werewolf Shot at PA Campsite May 2020. This post is in regard to the dog man that was killed in a central Pennsylvania campsite in the first week of May, 2020. It was shot in the face with 12 grams o buck and it went down in an ensuing battle of flying lead kicking and screaming. There were a dozen or so witnesses to the carcass and I know many pictures were taken. My pictures were deleted that night. I have no interest in speaking directly with anyone. I am posting here in hopes that you are one of those witnesses and that you read this. My hope is that one of you managed to keep one or more pictures hidden from the boss that night. If so, please post them and or email them to a researcher so that I and in fact we can get closure. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.